so much hinges on these shapes um, of right. So everything hinges on the reduced row echelon form of A and the reduced row echelon form of A transpose. And in particular, these pieces that come out of them, M, N, and R. So let's see if I can draw, or just give you a table. So you should know this table. So, uh, so the first thing would be, um, there are four main um, kind of kinds of A. There are these very nice ones where M equals N equals R. That's a square, square matrix. And it's full rank. We call this full rank. And these are the kind of matrices where there's none of this, none of this business anymore, right? There's none of this sort of thing. Two dimensions get sent to two dimensions. Every X over here gets sent to a B. There's no null space. You can go back. It's invertible, right? These are invertible matrices. So that's a big deal. And so they look, so their big picture version looks like this. In this abstract thing, right? So here's X, R, and B, and that's it. There's no, there's no left null space, no right null space. You can go back and forth. Right, so let's write this. So here's the his uh, M and R. This would be the big picture in the middle here. Um, number of solutions. I'll list this here. One, always one. To A X equals B. Always one. Um, uh, null space. Yeah. So the null space is well. All right. Yeah, you can see here, null space is zero, yeah? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's write it like this, the dimension of the null space and the dimension of left null space. So there are, these are the things you cannot make, that sort of governs when there might not be a solution. Uh, this uh, governs if there'll be infinitely many, right? And so in this case, zero, zero. Right, where the solution is possible. Right, if you have a B that has some part of this, and this is how many solutions. So the null spaces have these very powerful structures. So, all right, it could be a wide one. So it's just a wide, so this is square. All right, so M, and then also M equals R, but N is greater than R. Right, so it's wide, and if you looked at the rank, it would look like this. If you, oh, sorry, if you looked at the row reduced to echelon form, you get ones, and that, there'd be no zero rows. All right, so now the big picture looks like this, and there is a null space. All right, so the dimension of um, left left null space is zero, and here it's greater than or equal to one. There is a null space. So that means there are infinitely many solutions, always, because you kind of have this picture now, this gets sent over to zero, this is still zero, this is still zero, right? So I'll just, I'll leave out the AX, the whole business there, but, right? There's still, there are null space vectors, they get sent to zero, uh, there's a specific row vector that will get sent to B. There's nothing you can't make. That's what this is showing. There's nothing you can't make. All right, so let's have a, a um, tall one. And let's make um, uh, M is now greater than R, but N is equal to R. All right, in the row reduced form. If you think of this is N in this direction and M in this direction, actually it has to be all zeros here and all zeros here and ones down here which is kind of cool. So this is a tall one. And in this case, now we have a left null space. We have no null space. Well, the null space is trivial, as we like to say. Here's zero again, here's zero. So solutions may exist, 
but only if we're in column space, right? So there is a solution to this one, but this vector, unmakeable. You cannot make this one. So the number of solutions here is either um, Yeah, because the null space isn't there, there's either one, one solution, right? We, we can't add any, we can't just add stuff to it. So there's either one or zero. And this is when B is in the, null sp the column space of A. So the dimension of null space is now zero again, and this one is one. So there's stuff we can't make. And that comes from these kinds of shapes. Then there's a, a last category, which is just rectangular, um, but it's at that M and N are both greater than R. Right? So when we do row reduction, there'll be some zeros here, if we think about that. And so now there is a left a null space and a left null space. Right? So we can have this kind of thing. Um, Again, this is a reachable solution. We can always add something from null space because null space goes to zero. We cannot make this character here. This one's okay. So uh, it's possible to have a solution, right? So you can have solutions. And if there are solutions, you can always add something from null space. So it's either infinitely many or zero. And these dimensions are both greater than equal to one. Right, so this is a good thing to, to, to reflect upon, think about. You need to be able to kind of reproduce this and sort of see it. And you start to understand when you look at these matrices uh, in the wild um, what, what's possible. Um, you know, we, we'll get to some examples of how to use it, but we are learning how to use it. It's matrix wrangling. We're, just, we're getting our skills together. Okay, so there were three examples connecting the explicit big picture to the general big picture. I know that was quite a thing. This is, perhaps these are the two important ones, right? There's your summary. Um, and then there's this story here, general big picture, specific one for a particular problem. And you know, so you, you could be expected to kind of draw this sort of thing for a two by two. Um, and then start to understand this more generally. All right, good times. Um, go forth and enjoy matrices.